Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am so happy you came here today. And today I want to talk a little bit about the foods that we need to think about in order to reverse type 2 diabetes. I think that's a really important topic and there's always so many messages on the internet. You don't know what to believe. So since you don't really know, maybe a, an endocrinologist can help because that's she's all about hormones and all about diabetes. And that's Dr. Saying Honey. She's with me all the way from India, although she did work in my health system in Chicago. Who knew, right? We didn't know each other back then. So we're getting to know each other this way. So doc, let's talk a little bit about the foods that people need to be thinking about when they're wanting to do this magical thing called reversing type two diabetes. Yeah, absolutely. And you're so right. I mean, it's definitely power. Like medical nutrition therapy is a real thing. Changing your food to reverse your type two diabetes is a real thing. And at the same time, all of the doctors in the world have told the patient, fix your diet and exercise, eat less, move more. Pick, you know, don't eat this way or that way. Everybody's been told that and it hasn't cured the people. Most of them haven't been cured by just that sentence. So I avoid this list of um, don't eat this, mm -hmm. you know? And because the healthcare system has done that to so many people, I don't know if it happens to you, where the client is meeting me today, let's say it's Tuesday, they will binge on Monday night because mm -hmm. it's the last time they're gonna get to eat it before, before Roshni comes and says no. That's right. You know? So we're triggering this, what's in motivational interviewing, this is called psychological reactance. Mm. And what that is, is if anybody's been around a three-year-old, if you say, tie your shoelaces, then they don't want to. But if you say, I don't think you know how to tie your shoelaces, then they want to. Right. right. So yeah. it's human instinct for me to want to be the master of my ship. It's just the way we've become the top species in the world is we want autonomy. We will not be ruled over. So I want to be in charge of my decision. So if someone comes and tells me, don't eat this, I'm psychologically, even if I want to get better, unconsciously, I'm going to fight that. So what I do is I've trained myself in you know lots of different techniques, such as the motivational interviewing. And this came from the world of addiction medicine, where if there's a, somebody who's struggling with alcohol or dependence on any drug or medication, just telling them to stop is like really unhelpful. So what you wanna do is you wanna tap into something that de really does matter to them. Most of us, all of us humans wanna thrive. There's an innate desire to do well in whatever it is that I do. I want to sit at home, but I want to do that well. Mm. I want to be out in the world. I want to do that well. So we have that desire. And sometimes we get hopeless and we get crushed along the way. So the therapy that we should be thinking about when we meet our patients is, can we reactivate that? Can we tap into that? I'll give you an example. Is some you know In India, we just finished Diwali, which is like a big Hindu festival. And patients came and said, oh, I had Diwali and it was all chaos. I was like, why was it chaos? You ate food to celebrate with your family. That's a valid need. So you are on this call because you also have another valid need, which is to think about your health. So you have a need to socialize with your family and spend time with your loved ones. And you also have a need to look at your diabetes. I wonder you know, what needs to happen for the both of those to be able to align rather than keep you in this split personality where it's either I'm eating for pleasure or I'm eating for health and I can't have both. And there's this other term called mindful eating, which is just being aware of the food when I'm taking it in that bite or that feeling or the taste. And mm, it tastes so sweet. Like I'm saying it and my mouth is watering just as I'm even saying that to you, right? So the mind is so powerful. So to use that to our advantage is something I like to do rather than say, don't eat this. So who knew that my endocrinology colleague would uh, focus on how we think, right? So I just think that's powerful <laughs> and I'm so happy. And and if anybody is out here trying to help people heal, they'll realize that 80% of the battle is above your shoulders, right? It's up here. So I appreciate you framing things that way, being mindful about how we eat and, and, just, and, and just those senses, like um, the sense of uh, the texture of the food when you're trying to prepare it or even pick it up to eat the smell of the food, all of those senses, if you can just be in the moment and enjoy that moment and then pause just long enough to say, is this the best fuel for my body, right? 
And, and if you pause just long enough, even if you indulge that day, you may then reconsider it the next day. So I appreciate that framing, which is why you're a wonderful doctor and why so many people have probably engaged in this lifestyle approach in your clinical practice. So thanks again, doc, for coming to this video. Thanks again also for being a guest on the Protecting Your Nest podcast, where we talk even more about other ways to think through lifestyle changes. And for those who joined us today, I hope this video added value. And until the next video from the Metabolic Health Doc, continue to be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest.